How's it going, people? Yep, I'm going to pick up where I left off. I'm going to make this kind of quick. I found a nice shady spot, but unfortunately, so did the mosquitoes. <sighs> okay. A reiteration of these predictions is intermingled with the predictions concerning God or the powers of Antichrist to be collected against the Jews after their restoration. In the two chapters succeeding, In the latter years thou, God, <laughs> shall come into the land that is brought back from the sword and gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, which have been always waste, or have lain waste, for many centuries during the dispensation of the Jews. But it, that nation, is brought back out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely, all of them. Thou shalt ascend, and come like a storm. Thou shalt be like a cloud, to cover the land. Thou and all thy bands, and many people with thee, thus saith the Lord God, it shall also come to pass that the same people, wait, that the same time shall things come into thy mind. And thou shalt think an evil thought. And thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages, the state of the Jews in Palestine, after their restoration. I will go to them that are at rest that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls, and having neither bars nor gates, to take a spoil, and to take a prey, to turn thine hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited and upon the people that are gathered out of the nations, who have gotten cattle and goods, who dwell in the midst of the land. Thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel, thou and all thy bands, so will I make my holy name known in the midst of the people Israel, and the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. <laughs> Creator of the universe, but he's mostly focused it on that one little fly speck on the map. Oh. Behold, it is come, it is done, saith the Lord God. This is the day thereof I have spoken. And they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth, and shall set on fire and burn the weapons seven years. It's a lot of weapons if it's going to take that long. <laughs> the whole account is thus divinely summed up. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, now will I bring again the captive, captivity of Jacob and have mercy 
upon the whole house of Israel and will be jealous for my holy name. After that, they have borne their shame and all their trespasses, whereby they have trespassed against me. When they dwelt safely in their land, and none made them afraid. When I have brought them again from the people, and gathered them out of their enemies' lands, and have satisfied in them in the sight of many nations, because what they think matters, <laughs> then shall they know that I am the Lord their God, <laughs> who causes them to be led into captivity among the heathen. <sighs> But I have gathered them into their own land and left none of them there among the heathen anymore. Hmm. Neither will I hide my face anymore from them. No more peekaboo, huh? <laughs> For I have poured out my spirit upon the house of Israel saith the Lord God. It seems as though this were enough, if nothing more were quoted from the prophets to prove our point. If this proof should be deemed insufficient, one would be apt to say nothing that inspiration can assert upon the point could be deemed sufficient. Yeah, that'd be going too far, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, he's chilling out with the chilada. Oh, yeah. Okay. But, that it may appear that the prophetic writings unite to exhibit this as a great object of the Christian belief, I shall note some of the other predictions of it. <sighs> In Isaiah, the stem of the root of Jesse is promised. The millennium follows. Which one, I wonder? You've had We've had a couple <laughs> since then. Yeah. Not since writing this book, so these prophecies. Actually, we probably had a few. Yeah. We had a ways to go before we have another millennium. <sighs> when the cow and the bear shall feed together. And the wolf and the lamb unite in love. And nothing more shall hurt or offend, except that other part. <laughs> and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to gather the remnant of his people who shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush, which I thought was Egypt, but well, maybe not. Maybe it's just Africa. And from Elam and from Shinar and from Huna and from the Isles of the Sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together and dis uh, the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth.
because we know the Earth's got four corners, right? Or they could be just talking compass points. So I'll give them that. Just before the millennium, the Jews and ten tribes are collected from their long dispersion by the hand of omnipotence. Set a second time for their recovery. A body of the Jews and some of several other tribes recovered from ancient Babylon. God is going in the last days to make a second and more effectual recovery from mystical Babylon and from the four corners of the earth. The prophet proceeds and the Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea and with his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the river and shall smite it in the seven streams and make men go over dry shod and there shall be a highway for the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. Mr. Scott, upon this passage, says, for the Lord will then remove all obstacles by the same powerful interposition that he vouchsafed in behalf of Israel when he separated the tongue or the bay of the Red Sea and destroyed that hindrance to the departure of Israel. Well, the hindrance was God, you know, and he kept hardening Pharaoh's heart, didn't he? Pharaoh was like, all right, uh, oh, damn it, something keeps hardening my heart. <laughs> uh, it changed my mind again. And with a mighty wind, he will separate the waters of the river Euphrates in all its streams that men may pass over dry shod. Thus, an highway shall be made for Israel's return as there was with their ancestors to pass from Egypt into Canaan. This part of the chapter contains a prophecy which certainly remains yet to be accomplished. But it's still a prophecy because, you know, time hasn't run out so it could still happen. <laughs> Maybe. Lots of things could happen probably. Or not. Bishop Loth uh, says the same and adds, as quoted by Mr. Scott, this part of the chapter foretells the glorious times of the church, which shall be ushered in by the restoration of the Jewish nation, when they shall embrace the gospel. and be restored to their own country. This remarkable scene 
of providence is plainly foretold by most of the prophets and by St. Paul. Yeah. We thus have the testimony of those great men, Ruth and Scott, in favor of a literal restoration of the Jews to their own land, being here predicted. And here is a drying up of a mighty river to prepare the way for the event. A river is the symbol of a nation. That was the other way around. I don't know. Um, when Israel were to be redeemed from Egypt, the Red Sea was to be dried before them. When they were to be redeemed from Babylon, the Euphrates was by Cyrus to be dried or turned to accomplish the event. Because we all know Cyrus, the Cyrus, uh, Cy yeah, Cyrus was the, uh, the Messiah, one of them. <laughs> and a king of Persia, but oh well. And a pagan. And in their last restoration to Palestine, because, you know, third time's the charm, right? It wrong to be accomplished. Another great mystical river is to be dried up. The sixth... Um, the sixth vial dries up the mystic Euphrates. Why not just the mystic river? <laughs> uh, that the way of the kings of the east may be prepared. This is to be fulfilled by the Turks. Uh. Perhaps the event is now transpiring. Well, not at the time of this writing. <laughs> this river is to be smitten in its seven streams, as stated in the prophecy of Isaiah. Perhaps indicating that the Turks, be they ever so powerful in the uh, provinces and resources as seven is a number of perfection. Numerology, really? <laughs> they yet shall fail by the remarkable hand of God to accommodate the return of his ancient people. These prophetic hints give a interest to the present struggle in the southeast of Europe or in Greece. Hmm. Mm. In Jeremiah is the restoration of Israel. In his days, i.e., under the millennial reign of the righteous branch raised up by David, Judah shall be saved, and Israel, ow, and Israel shall dwell safely. I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries whither I have driven them and will bring them again into their own folds. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say, The Lord liveth, 
who brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but the Lord liveth, who brought up and who led the house of Israel out of the north country, and from all countries whither I have driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. You know, the one they stole from those other guys. As this event is under the reign of Christ, so it has never yet been fulfilled, because he never reigned. <laughs> it is an event of the last days. And plants the ancient people of God in their own land. And I think I'm going to take a break at this point. The top of page 36. Well, to be continued.